we can use the KSP value to um, see if a precipitate will be formed, um, perhaps like in a double replacement reaction. So um, let's see if we can't do that. I'm going to remind you of um, KSP values. Let us look at a solid being dissociated when it dissolves into its ion. For this particular reaction, the KSP expression would look like this. And um, that would say at equilibrium, the concentration of the cation and, and the concentration of the anion together will give us the KSP value. We also remember the reaction quotient. And we can recall that the reaction quotient has the same form as the law of mass action, K. However, the concentrations that we can use to find Q don't have to be at equilibrium. The concentrations that determine KSP must be at equilibrium. So um, when we take these concentrations and find Q, we are able to look at Q in um, contrast to K and determine which way a reaction will move to make the Q values the same as the K value. If Q values, if the Q concentrations are the same as the K concentration, the system is at equilibrium and the solution is saturated. We will find some particles um, that are undissolved and some that are dissolved, and the rate at which they are dissolving is equal to the rate at which they are crystallizing. If the value of Q is less than the value of K, say that this is Q and this is K, then in order for these values to become K values, there will be an a shift to the right we would need this to occur, and these ions uh, numbers to be larger, so more would dissolve, no precipitate would form. A precipitate will form when a solid is made. Now, on the other hand, if K values are smaller than Q values, then we will need for um, the Q values to decrease, which means we would need the reverse reaction to take precedence of the forward reaction. So more solid would be made and a precipitate will be formed. Okay, let's look at that um, in problem form. A solution of calcium ions is uh, 4 times 10 to the negative 5th molar, and uh, carbonate ions are added to the solution. Um, in the molarity of those carbon eight atoms are two times ten to the negative third. Should a precipitate form? Here is the um, expression that governs the dissolution of calcium carbonate. The KSP, the law of mass action, it takes this form, and the KSP value is three times ten to the negative nine. The Q um, values come from these two numbers, and one would calculate the Q to be 8 times 10 to the negative 8 molar. Q, in this case, is um, a larger number times 10 to the negative 8 is bigger than 10 to the negative 9. So we would need this to occur. This needs to happen. More solid needs to be formed to decrease these values, and therefore a solid would form. Will a precipitate of silver chromate form? Uh, here's its KSP value. If these concentrations are um, available, well, we know that Q in this case uh, would be based off of this equation. Two silver ions and a chromate ion will be um, Hello, would the following teachers please go to the cafeteria and visit with the achievement team like Bobby Lechleiter and Jack Barthorn's team, uh, Billy Harden, Anne Kraft, and Tabitha McKinney. You need to go back and visit with the team in the cafeteria for science. Thank you.
Um, putting those values in, we have 2 times 10 to the negative 4th, that quantity squared, times 3 times 10 to the negative 5th, and that gives me a number that is 1.2 times 10 to the negative 12th. That is my cube value, 1.2 times 10 to the negative 12th is a smaller number than 9 times 10 to the negative 12th. So I need more to dissolve to bring the Q concentrations up to the K concentration. So no precipitate will be formed. Okay, now let's look at a situation where we have a double replacement reaction that's going to occur. And it is your job to determine whether this will indeed form a solid when these two solutions are mixed. And this is kind of a granddaddy of the problem. Um, they give us a one liter solution with a lead to nitrate and a one liter solution of the sodium bromide. And we have to figure out if this will uh, form the precipitate or not. Well, the first thing we have to do is figure out uh, the number of moles of each one of these because we need to know which one of these reactive limits because that's going to tell us how much product is formed. We have to find the concentration of the product so we can do a Q uh, calculation to see and then rate Q compared to K. So let's start this one grade now. Um, I remember that molarity is equal to moles per liter to find moles I multiply liters times the molarity. So I really need to know the number of moles of lead to nitrate given its uh, concentration times its volume. And I have 0 0.015 moles of the lead to nitrate available to react the number of moles of sodium bromide equal to its concentration times its volume is uh, 0.0035 moles. Now I'm interested to see how many moles of lead to nitrate are formed uh, by um, both of these to find which one limit. So I'd like to know the number of moles lead to bromide equal to uh, the lead to nitrate. I'm going to look at my balanced equation and see that there's a one-to-one -one molar ratio. So one mole of lead to nitrate needs to react to make one mole of lead to bromide. So when I use up all of my um, lead to nitrate, I can yield 0 0.051 moles of uh, lead to bromide. The number of moles of lead to bromide that can be formed with um, all of my sodium bromide can be figured out this way. Two moles of sodium bromide need to react to make one mole of lead to bromide. So that would be 0 0.00175 moles of lead to bromide that can be um, formed. Spoiler alert, no precipitate forms. Um, we need some work to uh, determine that. So we have determined that 0 0.00175 moles of uh, lead to bromide can be formed. I am going to do a Q calculation, and a Q calculation for this would look like that. Please denote that you need molarity, not moles. So I have to find the molarity of the um, lead to bromide in my solution. Let's remember, I used one liter of the lead to nitrate and one liter of the sodium bromide and poured them together to form this 0 0.00175 moles of lead to bromide. So my concentration um, in molarity of the lead to bromide looks like this. Um, 
then my Q values are based on the ions. And I recall that um, lead to bromide will form um, ions in this manner. So my concentration of uh, lead ions is a, the same as the concentration of the lead to bromide ions. But my concentration of the bromine ion is two times that, or um, 0.00175 more. And now I can put these in to calculate Q. Reaction, so no precipitate will form. 